हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश चौखानिया जनरल पीडियाट्रिशियन फ्रॉम बैंड्रा मुंबई एंड टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द टॉपिक नॉट एवरीवन कैन अचीव हाइट इन अदर वर्ड्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग अवर क्लिनिकल अप्रोच टू अ चाइल्ड विथ शॉर्ट स्टेचर पेरेंट्स ऑफन परसीव दैट देयर चाइल्ड इज शॉर्ट बट दिस मे नॉट एक्चुअली बी ट्रू सो द फर्स्ट स्टेप वेन अ चाइल्ड इज बींग ब्रॉट इन फॉर शॉर्ट स्टेचर इज टू कन्फर्म दिस बाय प्लॉटिंग द चाइल्ड हाइट on a growth chart and confirming that it is below the third centile of course this is only if you have not been doing this regularly because routinely we should be plotting the growth of every child on every visit that the child comes to us in our clinic because such an approach not only helps us to pick up growth faltering early but it also provides us with a trajectory over time which tells us a lot of insight into the process which is leading to the growth faltering whether the process is static whether it's rapidly progressive slowly progressive etc as a corollary to this if single reading which is below the third centile should not make us jump to any investigations unless there are other clinical pointers talking about an urgency to investigate we would rather follow up this child for 6 to 12 months develop a trajectory get a trajectory study that and then take our actions accordingly for routine did pay purposes any growth chart is fine so of course it is better to always better to follow ip growth charts that is indian academy of pediatrics growth charts in special circumstances like preterms downs and turners we have special growth charts for these conditions now we must also remember that in intrauterine period nutrition is the key determinant of growth and hormones like thyroxine and growth hormone actually come in later after birth and in childhood and of course during puberty the sex hormones contribute significantly additionally so the point is that if a child has suffered severe intrauterine growth restriction very early in fetal life this child runs the risk of a permanent deficit in height later and may not catch up properly coming to our actual approach to a child with short stature the first step is to decide whether this child is sick or unwell or is absolutely normal an unwell child who is short suggests a chronic systemic disease in the form of a chronic uh, organ dysfunction and the commonest is chronic renal disease because the other symptoms may be very non specific like say weakness or tiredness which do not directly point to the renal etiology other conditions like chronic infections and chronic malnutrition may also be short and unwell however they may have other symptoms and may not present with short stature as such celiac disease is one condition where the child may not look really sick in the true sense of the word but then on deeper probing into the history we might get subtle gi symptoms or overly responsive anemia etc other systemic diseases like chronic liver disease chronic heart disease present with symptoms directly pertaining to that organ and therefore short stature is an accompaniment but not a presenting feature in these if we find that the child is absolutely fine not unwell then the next subset that can be easily filtered out is those with developmental delay if there is developmental delay we need to confirm or rule out hypothyroidism mucopolysaccharidosis or some storage disorders at this point we make a note that acquired hypothyroidism the scholastic backwardness may be subtle or may be absent or may not be easily picked up and therefore we don't depend on that further differentiation within this group can be made on the basis of proportionate or disproportionate short stature so hypothyroid children will be short limbed so also other children with skeletal dysplasia chondrodystrophies etc though of course they will not be developmentally delayed 
as a part of the general examination clinical examination we will also look at deformities that may point to skeletal dysplasias dysmorphic features that may point to chromosomal abnormalities and sometimes we may have typical facies so some of the mps hypothyroid or even growth hormone deficiency will have a infantile facies with a uh maybe a micro penis so these different different facies can be clinically identified and it will help in our clinical analysis another point to remember is that we must always correlate the growth of the child with the pubertal stage of the child because we know that there is a growth spurt in mid puberty in girls and slightly later in boys single most important tool for evaluating short stature in clinical practice is the growth chart In fact laboratory investigations including hormonal studies are reserved to confirm the diagnosis or occasionally to separate out between very close differentials so the growth chart gives us a lot of information about clinically diagnosing children with short stature the next concept that is important is to look at the weight for height of the child child what does this mean weight for height means whether the weight is appropriate high or low for that height this can be done either by looking at weight for height growth charts or it can be by done by using the concept of weight age and height age so height age means that the given child's height would have been ideal at what age that is the height age so for example if you have a 6 year old child whose height is 100 cm this 100 cm would have been ideal height at 4 years so the height age of this 6 year old child is 4 years this concept and thereby comparing weight with height or weight for height gives us a lot of information so on the growth chart if the child's height is below the third centile but the weight is also suffering badly that means the weight for height is low this suggests chronic malnutrition or chronic systemic disease on the other hand there would be some children whose height is below the third centile but whose weight is actually on the higher centiles or above the 95th centile so in other words these children are short but plump or obese and in these cases the weight for height is higher than normal these are usually endocrine disorders so like cushing syndrome or hypothyroidism or at times chromosomal abnormalities may also behave this way and finally there is a set of children whose height is below the third centile but whose weight is just normal these would be weight for height normal and this group could be growth hormone deficiency or skeletal dysplasias or storage disorders the next thing that we need to look at on the growth chart is of course the growth velocity so basically we need to look at the trajectory or the trend on the growth chart and this is a indirect measure of the growth velocity so of course we can separately look at velocity charts so in endocrine disorders the growth of the the growth curve of the child progressively falls below the lowest normal centile which is the third centile which means the growth velocity over time is falling on the other hand the two commonest causes of short stature in clinical practice are familial short stature and constitutional delay of growth and puberty in both these disorders though the child's growth curve is below the third centile it is just below the third centile and it is parallel to the third centile it keeps running parallel to that centile which means that the height velocity is low but normal these children further can be differentiated clinically fairly accurately so if the mid parental height is short or just about average then this child is most likely to be familial short stature on the other hand if the mid parental height is good or at least one parent is tall then we need to ask a question whether any one of the two parents picked up height later in their ages 
and if the answer is yes then our subject child is quite likely to have constitutional delay of growth and puberty of course the diagnosis can be confirmed by a bone age in which case in familial short stature the bone age will be equal to the chronological age whereas in constitutional delay the bone age will be less than the chronological age but equal to the height age of the subject of course the bone age has to be estimated very accurately by either a radiological software or using standard methods like grulick and pile atlas etc and not just by the appearance or absence of epiphyseal centers so to sum up friends the approach to short stature clinically is very easy all that we have to do is look at whether the child is sick or not sick whether there is developmental delay whether the short stature is proportionate or disproportionate are there any dysmorphic features are there any skeletal deformities and of course a very analytical look at the growth chart and it would almost always give us most of the diagnosis which just need to be confirmed with appropriate tests where necessary thank you the next video will be by dr shridhar ganpati on tall stature thank you